gray seal maneuvers through the cold waters of the North Atlantic in search of fish. Her mind is constantly on high alert. The threat of predation is ever-present, and just as she searches for food, there are other, much larger creatures in these waters doing the exact same thing. Then suddenly, she halts, seeing a large dark mass swimming underneath her. She is cautious not to react too rapidly, and takes a second to identify the mass. The mass is large, gray, and slow-moving. It does not look like an orca, nor anything she is currently aware of as a threat. The mass seemingly pays her no mind, and they go their separate ways. Later on, the seal makes her way back to one of her favorite shoals with a belly full of fish. However, on the way back she is suddenly struck, and feels a large set of jaws clamp around her chest. Unbeknownst to this unfortunate seal, the creature she encountered earlier was very much a threat, and now she would be ambushed and consumed entirely by that same threat, a Greenland shark. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Nature's Reality YouTube channel. Today we're here to talk about the oldest shark in the world, the Greenland shark. The Greenland shark is a large, primitive looking shark, being a brownish grey in coloration while possessing a short rounded snout, tiny eyes, and relatively small dorsal fins. The scientific name for the Greenland shark is Somniosis microcephalus, indicating that they belong to the genus Somniosis. The sleeper sharks of the southern hemisphere also belong to this genus and are closely related to the Greenland shark. Interestingly, the Greenland shark is not only the largest member of their genus, but also one of the largest sharks in the entire world. Specimens typically grow to lengths of anywhere from 8 to 15 feet, with the longest on record being an astonishing 24 feet long. In terms of weight, Greenland sharks typically weigh around 900 pounds, but some exceptional specimens can exceed 2,000 pounds in weight. In terms of range, you can find the Greenland shark inhabiting the cold, deep, and dark waters of the North Atlantic Ocean, near it and within the Arctic Ocean, around the coasts of northeastern Canada, the North Atlantic United States, Greenland, Iceland, Northern Europe, and parts of northeastern Russia. While they typically inhabit these cold northern waters, Greenland sharks are occasionally spotted further south on the east coast of the United States. In 2013, researchers from Florida State University caught a 12 foot long Greenland shark from 6,000 feet below the surface off the Gulf of Mexico. In my opinion, this odd catch showcases the limited understanding we as humans truly have about most ocean life. This Greenland shark may simply be regarded and viewed as an anomaly, but it could also mean that Greenland sharks are much more widespread than we think, elusively inhabiting the cold and deep waters and places far from the Arctic Circle. Additionally, further DNA testing has yielded some conflicting results, and there is not much clarification if this shark was a hybrid between a Greenland shark and a sleeper shark, or just a pure Pacific sleeper. Anyhow, within the waters they inhabit, Greenland sharks vary where they spend their time, sometimes closer to the coast, and other times deep within the open ocean. Moreover, the Greenland shark can be found at depths of up to 7,200 feet, preferring water temperatures of around 1 to 12 degrees Celsius. Additionally, in the winter, the northernmost populations typically won't dive as deep, maxing out their depth at around 2,000 feet, as they prefer to remain close to the surface, where the water temperature is more desirable. Then, within the fjords of northern Europe, Greenland sharks are occasionally caught and observed. Their presence deep inland affirms that they have a notable tolerance for freshwater environments. This is a fact that has always stuck out to me, because I recall when I was younger watching an episode of River Monsters, where Jeremy Wade was attempting to catch the creature responsible for the Loch Ness monster lore. And the creature he ended up catching, and attributing to the legend, was in fact a Greenland shark. On the topic of freshwater inhabitants, Greenland sharks are pretty good at it, and are known residents of the St. Lawrence River in Canada, and have been there ever since the end of the last ice age. However, unlike bull sharks who can live in the freshest of freshwater environments, Greenland sharks typically only inhabit brackish water, which is water possessing a lower salt content than typical seawater, but not a low enough quantity to be considered freshwater. The fjords of northern Europe have water flow in from the ocean and mix with the rivers flowing out, while the St. Lawrence River is fed by the Atlantic Ocean via the St. Lawrence Gulf. Regardless of whether or not the water is entirely fresh, I still find it to be incredibly interesting that a shark that typically grows to be over 10 feet long and can weigh thousands of pounds could travel so far inland. It is truly a fascinating phenomenon. I've been lucky enough to visit Quebec City a few times, and it is very interesting to know that Greenland sharks are likely to traverse the water right by the heart of the city. Unfortunately for the Greenland shark, a lot of this traversing is done without much of a visual aid, thanks to a tiny parasitic copepod called Oma Tacoita elongata. This crustacean is a nasty little bugger that has infected over 90% of Greenland sharks in any given population. The parasite, typically a female, will latch onto the cornea of a Greenland shark and eat away at the tissue, with her larvae following suit as they hatch. This leaves the shark virtually blind, likely only leaving them able to see flashes of dark and light patterns. Thankfully, it isn't too much of a handicap for their survival, as their sense of smell tends to make up for their lack of vision just fine. This impressive sense of smell is also what helps to make them the efficient predators that they are. Greenland sharks may come across as slow moving and docile, but I would say that this is all a deception. 
There is a reason that the only macropredatory fish larger than the Greenland shark is the great white. The diet of a Greenland shark consists of various species of fish like herring, char, halibut, and lumpfish, marine mammals like seals, sea lions, and cetaceans, smaller sharks, and even carrion. There is also a large misconception that the Greenland shark only feeds on gray seals by scavenging on them, but that is simply not the case. Greenland sharks are remarkably intelligent and will lie in wait around the breathing holes that seals make in the ice and ambush them when they come to use them. This ferocity even extends to larger animals as there are documented cases of beluga whales being spotted with large chunks of their flesh missing and a Greenland shark jaw ring surrounding the wound. What's even weirder is that several large animals such as polar bears, reindeers, and horses have all been found in the stomach contents of Greenland sharks. All of these large animals were likely consumed through scavenging However, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of Greenland sharks seizing a rare opportunity to snag one. Regarding their dentition, Greenland sharks typically possess around 100 teeth, with slightly more concentrated on the bottom. Their upper jaw is lined with short and thin teeth without any serrations, while their bottom teeth are more squared and broadened in appearance. One of the most intriguing aspects about the Greenland shark is their incredibly long lifespan. And while it is hard to give an exact estimate, researchers guess that the average Greenland shark lives for around 250 years. The most notable instance of a Greenland shark living an exceptionally long time was when a carbon dating technique was done on a 5 meter long female who was found to be anywhere from 272 to 512 years old. And even if the real age of this shark was on the lower side of the estimate, the Greenland shark would still possess the longest lifespan of any extant vertebrate. Scientists attribute this long lifespan to a few factors such as their slow growth rate and subarctic lifestyle. Due to their incredibly slow aging process, it is estimated that Greenland sharks do not reach sexual maturity until they are around a century old. In terms of reproduction, the Greenland shark is ovoviviparous, meaning that the eggs hatch inside of the mother shark and then are later born live. A female Greenland shark can have up to 10 pups at a time, and each pup is born at around 15 inches or 38 centimeters in length. Their slow growth rate also emphasizes the importance of a singular Greenland shark in any given ecosystem. Unfortunately, there is no current estimation of global Greenland shark numbers, but the IUCN has listed them as a vulnerable species. This listing comes as a result of several factors, including their slow growth rate, human pressure from fishing, and the warming of their habitat. Believe it or not, humans have sought out the Greenland shark since the 13th century, specifically in Norway where their liver oil was used to fuel lamps. And from the 16th to 19th century, fishing continually ramped up for the Greenland shark. This would continue until the early 1900s when fishing for the Greenland shark saw its peak. The demand for synthetic oils dramatically increased, and in 1910, 32,000 individuals are recorded to have been harvested. And the impact of this extensive fishing upon the Greenland shark is still felt by populations today. Commercial fishing for the Greenland shark was restricted altogether in the 1960s, when the NAFO and European Union sought to protect the shark. There are no recorded instances of Greenland sharks attacking people, but a story from the 1800s tells of a dissected Greenland shark with a human leg inside of their stomach. But this story is not backed up by any solid evidence, and in reality, they are not much of a threat to people, like practically all species of shark. Greenland sharks have also been sought out for consumption by both Inuit and Icelandic peoples for centuries. The meat of the Greenland shark is actually toxic unless properly dried and fermented. The process of drying actually takes a considerably long time, lasting anywhere from four to six months before meat is safe. Also, the flesh of a Greenland shark smells strongly of urine due to the high levels of urea in their body. This is a reality carried over into Inuit legend, which states that the Greenland shark lives in the urine pot of the sea goddess and provides shamans with good luck. Well everyone, that concludes today's video on the Greenland shark. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed, and if you want to see more content from me, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Anyways, have a great day and thank you so much for watching.